Hi, and welcome to Redgate Farm. We are here with a new tip Mustang. His, we've nicknamed him Major. Um, Major is a four-year-old gelding out of Diamond Hills, Nevada, HMA. He just arrived this morning from the holding pen, and we gave him a few hours just to settle into a stall here. And now I'm going to just kind of play with him a little bit. I want to show you guys how we sort of introduce these horses to the initial training process. The first thing I like to do is just come out in the pen they've already gotten comfortable in. I don't even put him in the round pen. I come out here and I basically just play with him. I move him a little bit. I see how curious he is and I just kind of get a feel for him. So let me show you how we do that. Hey big guy. One of the reasons we picked this particular horse out of holding is he seemed to be a little bit more of a docile temperament. He just seemed calmer. He has been in captivity for about a year and a half now. So um, he's sort of used to people a little bit, just not necessarily being handled at all. As you can see, he's a pretty good size. He's pretty stout. Um, so he can be intimidating. And for that reason, you obviously want to be careful around a horse. But a uh, good chance he's got some draft breeding somewhere back in his blood. I'll just kind of check. You can see he's not really reacting. Hi. One of the first things I introduce is just kind of keeping an eye on me. If he turns around, I'll increase the pressure. But as long as he stands there relaxed, I just kind of walk around like I'm sort of kind of ignoring him. See, I like the way he's following me a little bit. There you go. And as soon as he looks at me, I take that pressure away. I'm also being careful not to make him feel trapped in that end of the pen. I would like to keep him out here so he doesn't go up into his stall, but um, I don't want to make him feel trapped to the point he has to flee or fight me. Next thing I'll often do is just see how they take to my stick. See if I get any curious response. Hi. Not too concerned, are you? You want to smell? Check it out. Check it out. What do you think? He's not too interested, but he's not leaving. So I'm happy with that. What'd you think? And we got a touch there. Touch. If I get a touch or something like that, I'll just back away for a minute. Let him think about it. So yeah, I like him. He's very, very calm. He's got a nice temperament. Right here. You want to play it all? Huh? Can I pet you? Look at you. So considering I've not worked with this horse, I've not moved him around in the round pen, I really like it when they just kind of stand there and they're willing, as long as you don't put too much pressure, they're willing to sort of think through this. This is usually a really good sign that he'll be pretty easy to work with. All right. So you can see I'm starting to sort of expand the area I touch, but I don't want to touch too much. I want to take my stick away before he moves. And we've got another, it's another tip Mustang goofing off and playing in the water. So excuse the noise there. He thinks he's a fish. Chester. Hey, come on, get away. There you go. I want you to also notice how passive my body is. I'm not looking him in the eye. I'm just sort of sidling up to him. I'm not being sneaky by any means, but just letting him know that I'm not a threat. I'm not coming at him head on. I'm not glaring at him like a predator. I'm just sort of walking around, minding my own business, a little bit of a slumped shoulder, very relaxed posture, very sideways when I'm at him. Never staring him down because I don't want him to feel that I'm a threat. Oh, there's a little, a little too fast for you. Good boy. So see, there was a little curiosity, and so I'm going to walk away. Very nice. Try the other side. Whatever I do to one side, I try to do the other. Good boy. Good boy. Yeah, let me touch your neck. Yeah, good boy. Your feet are kind of glued to the ground, aren't they? Yeah. Let's see if he'll let us get a little further down his neck. 
the first thing I want to prepare him for is haltering. So once I can get a halter on him, training becomes much easier with a lot less exertion on my part. Because frankly, I'm not nearly as good a shape as him. So as much as I love the round pen, the more I can do like this with them just in a nice relaxed environment, the easier the job is later. Hi, what are you doing? You gonna come check it out? What you think? Oh, look at there. That is actually my first touch. I've not touched him before. So even at the holding facility, he let one of my girls touch him, but I haven't. So that was nice. Come on, you want to try it again? Try it again. Yeah, look at there. The closer I get to his body, the more threatened he's going to feel. So once I get a touch, a lot of times I go back to my stick and I work my way further back, but I don't want to threaten him into moving off real quick. So I just kind of keep transitioning back and forth. And while he's learning to accept my presence, he doesn't realize I've also introduced him to de the desensitizing process. So he's getting used to my stick. He's learning not to fear my stick. All right? The stick is simply used as an extension of my arm right now. It lets me touch him and scratch him. I press pretty hard. So like right now, he's got a horse fly on his shoulder. So I can scratch him pretty hard. It feels good. And the stick becomes a friend to him, not something to fear. Right here. I know that fly. He's a pesky thing, isn't he? What are you doing? What are you doing? I love to see this. When I get a horse that's kind of curious and they want to reach out and sniff and smell, always makes training easier when they're curious about learning and what you're doing. Now I'm gonna try to creep my way around here. I'd like to get a little closer down his side, petting him with my stick. I don't care. My goal right here is not to touch him. And I think that's a big problem for a lot of new adopters is it's a race to touch the horse or to put a halter on the horse. I'm not gonna race through this. This is a critical time for him to learn that I'm not a threat. So it's really just playing with him. I just see what he tolerates, right? Does he tolerate me moving my stick from one side to the other? Some horses have an issue with that. Does he tolerate my stick over his head? You know, there's little things that different horses like different things, tolerate different things, and absolutely hate different things. So I kind of want to find out what's going to send him away and what he's okay with. Right now he's doing pretty good with all of it. Right? Right? Yeah. You want to try the hand again? What are you doing? There. Look at there. Good boy. Good boy. Job. Good job. Okay, we're going to try and see if he'll tolerate the stick on his side. This is a different angle. And if he moves forward, I'm simply going to calmly try to cut him off and send him back to this area. This is going to become his place of rest at the moment because it's wide enough that he can move, but not so narrow that I'm going to get myself hurt. What you think? What you think? This is a nice opportunity to check out his legs. Some horses, if they're going to be really kicky and have that strong tendency, then they're going to kick at my stick. And it kind of lets me know how on guard I need to be as I get around his legs later. Whoops. So we're just going to send him back. So he wasn't too crazy over that. Good. When he stands nice and still, I'm going to go back to a level he was comfortable at. And just kind of start the process again. Good. Back away. Yeah. What do you think? What do you think? Yeah. What do you think? It's 
So he's a bit nervous right now. His respiration's increased a little because I've gotten closer to his side. He's not so sure. So he's right on the verge of leaving. I'm gonna pet for a moment and I wanna walk away before he does. I'm watching his muscles and, and how he quivers or tenses to kind of get a feel for where his limits are. And my goal is to move away before he does. That way he knows I'm not gonna corner him or hurt him. Good boy. Okay, let's introduce my string. Some horses tolerate this better than others, so I'm real careful at first. I don't want to send him into a frenzy. He's watching it, but he doesn't seem too concerned. For whatever reason, most horses seem most comfortable with it touching their backs first. That's one of the least guarded areas I've found. Anywhere else may make them jump or run off, but for some reason the back they often tolerate fairly well. They may move off, but not usually too fast. So I kind of start with the back shoulders area and then move around from there. This is letting him feel something on both sides. I'm standing on one side, there's something moving on the other side as it flops over, rubs him on his side over there. Boy, those flies are getting me, aren't they? Now I'll touch his leg, just kind of let it, it's almost like an accident. I just sort of let it bump his leg, see what happens. And he didn't, he didn't respond, so that's a good sign. He didn't kick at it, he didn't panic about it being back there, he's just kind of letting it bump him, almost like it's his tail. So that's an excellent sign that he's probably not gonna be much of a kicker He's not extremely reactive about anything, so this is really good. I'd like to do the other side, if we can move him off this fence. Can you move over? I want over here. Yeah. I find that every horse is a little more protective of one side than the other. So because he's been so open and accepting on his left, or I'm sorry, on his right, he's gonna be a little more protective of this left side. He's more likely to turn away from me that way. He wants to guard it instead of opening it up to me. So it just means we'll have to get a little more creative and spend a little more time working over here to get him comfortable, right? Right? What do you think? You gonna let me over there? You're not leaving enough room for me to squeeze through. No, you're not. Okay. Okay, this time, for the first time, I'm gonna ask him to move away and let's see if he'll do it. I don't really care which way right now. I just want him to step off. Good. That's all I wanted, I took off pressure. I just needed him to open that side up a little so I don't get myself caught in a corner here where he could run over me. Good. You're letting me pet it, aren't you? Did that fly off with my stick? What you think? I know, those are just pesky things, aren't they? Good boy. Good. And remember, we want to walk away before he does. Even though we've been petting him, it can be tempting to overdo it on the new side, but you always want to start fresh. Okay? Lots and lots of just approach and retreat at this stage. Again, no rush, no rush to pet, no rush to do anything with him. And by the way, for anybody who might have uh, noticed, he's not wearing a neck tag. Uh, a lot of the horses at our holding facility pull their neck tags off in the feeders. And typically they don't replace them because they just go by the brand. So we have not removed his neck tag. It was off at holding, he doesn't have one. Oh, you're okay. Did I swing my arm too fast? Yeah. Now I wanna show you kind of an example here of different approaches. The most common mistake I see the, the kind of new adopters make um, is they want to be sneaky. They're kind of scared of the horse. So they wanna sneak up because they're afraid they're gonna spook him, you know? So then they kind of walk up and they're like, I'm gonna reach out, I'm gonna to touch you. But if you watch the horse's expression, you see how his ears, he's kind of on guard. 
because my approach is all wrong. His, his nostrils are starting to flare a little bit. He's trying to decide if he should stay or run because I'm looking scary. That's why you never want to sneak. Decide what you're going to do and do it carefully, but with a purpose. Let them know what's coming. Be non-threatening, but just do it. So you'll see the difference here. Instead of me walking up all sneaky-like, I just let him know what's coming from a distance. Hey, bud, we're going to pet. We're going to pet. Now, he moved his head, but you see his ears were more relaxed and his nostrils did not flare that time. So it's a really, really big difference in your approach as to how they respond. And that's really critical at this stage in earning their trust. Right, big guy? Yeah. How's that feel? You're sweaty. A little warm out here, isn't it? All right. Well, I'm actually gonna call this good for this session. This is his first session. At this point, I like to put them out in the round pen, so we'll move on to the next stage. But for this session, I've gotten a feel for him. I've seen he's really not flighty and not reactive as long as you don't push him too fast. I've also introduced myself and my stick and the fact that we are not threatening, we're not gonna hurt him. One of the really big advantages of using this method just in this relaxed environment you know, today it's like 91 degrees and humid here. You can see he's a little sweaty just standing here. So am I. So I don't want to take him into a round pen and run him when it's this hot. That just wouldn't be nice. So doing it this way, he can stay cooler, I can stay cooler, and we can use the round pinning a little later, maybe at the end of the day, when I don't have as many hours, but now we'll be able to progress faster because he's got that basic understanding and it's cooler. So stay tuned, we'll have the next session coming up.